This is the God Kingdom Philosophy Podcast with creator and master teacher, Mr. Cornell Gregory. The soul of the soldier, the children of the most high, humanity, was never created to have knowledge of evil, death. This is the result of the original sin in the garden. When evil, death, is planted in the soul, the heart, the mind, it will grow and give off evil fruit. The loss of spiritual understanding, this connection with the Father, that humanity is children without the understanding of their spirit self. We are spirit, a God spirit, the image of the Father. We have a soul and a physical body. The question was raised, why did the soldier struggle after returning from battle? The soul was not intended to see death. The mind becomes the graveyard. Visions of death, blood, pain, terror, and nightmares fill the house. The soul, mind, the heart. Of the soldier. His house has become haunted, horror. He tries to numb the pain with drugs, alcohol, women, sometimes even suicide. Anything to stop the visions and voices of death. Adam is lost and he needs to be located. He is in pain. His soul is in chaos. He is dying a thousand deaths. Suicide would not help him. The spirit and the soul never die. Natural death does not stop the torment. My brother, hear me clear. The light has come to you. You are not just man, full of weaknesses and past pains and mistakes. You are God and children of the Most High. As the younger prodigal son, you have been in the hall camp and you have done the unthinkable. But it's time to come home. Your father is waiting for you with open arms. Be filled with his light. It will replace the darkness in your soul. This is your only hope for survival. Dominate your thoughts. Please share with all soldiers and prisoners of war. It will be a tree of life to them. The God Kingdom Philosophy Podcast with creator and master teacher, Mr. Cornell Gregory. After countless hours of reading and study, a series of open dreams and visions, I have developed a new school of philosophical thought called the God Kingdom Philosophy. I am the creator and master teacher of the God Kingdom philosophy. The GKP is not a new religion. It's a simple study on the most high's greatest creation. You. His very own children. I'm not opposed to any other religious organizations or worldview. And I do not disrespect sincere people who desire truth. And the meaning of life. But my honest belief is that. The very elect has been deceived. God has no religion. I believe that religion has failed to answer the most important questions presented by life. Questions like. What is the meaning of life? What is. Who am I? What is time? What is right and wrong? What happens after death? Does God exist? Why is there evil in the world? What is destiny and free will? What is philosophy? I have also spent much of my life puzzled by these same questions. 
the GKP answers all of these questions. My hope is that we can all grow in understanding, in love and in peace as we walk together in discovering the true purpose in which we were created. The GKP is a series of spiritual teachings called the 12 Pillars of the God Kingdom Philosophy. In the book of Daniel, verse 2 and 44, speaks of a kingdom that will crush all the kingdoms of this world and will reign forever. You are that kingdom. That kingdom is not a place, but it's a species, a people, a lost people, if you will. Mankind was created to provide spiritual light to the world, as the sun and moon provide natural light. Mankind is the only species which has been given the image of the Most High. The GKP will explore this topic along with many others. My hope and prayer is that we can examine this teaching for yourself. My hope and prayer is that you will examine this teaching for yourself and see if this teaching answers the questions you have about life and meaning. I admonish you to examine this teaching alongside any other guru, guru, any other sage, master, teacher, philosopher, prophet, pastor, etc. See which worldview answers all of your questions. God has given us a mind to reason. We are not created to be robots, to follow rank and file behind any man, woman, or any teachings without close examination. So with that being said, I would like to congratulate you on the start of your new journey. Grace and peace be unto you. Democrat, Republican, or any social group you have pledged your allegiance to, do you see past failures? Look at yourself and tell me what do you see? The past pain, the broken hearts from the people you have loved that has left you or hurt you? Where are you? God called out his first child, Adam, because he was hiding in his nakedness. He looked in the mirror and saw his human flaws and failures. The Creator says, But who told you you were naked? You are the image and likeness of God. You are his child, his reflection, and his prized possession. You are not your body or your mind, but you are God's and children of the Most High God. When you look in the mirror, understand this. Dominate your industry and your thoughts. Be fruitful and multiply yourself by learning and teaching and change your world set order to both mind and the body. People say black people party too much, and yes, we can overdo it. The really amazing thing is that people can face slavery, Jim Crow, heartache, and pain and still find a reason to dance, to sing and dance when others say you should give up and die. Keep dancing, my people. Keep singing your favorite song to the top of your lungs. Let the world know you will not be quitting anytime soon. You will keep learning. You will keep growing. You will keep fighting. You have already won. Just don't quit. Prayer is not asking God to give you victory. It's thanking the Father for creating you with the capacity to defeat all giants. Does the eagle have to ask God to fly? No. He is living out created purpose. We are created to be fruitful, multiply, and replenish. You are God's. Take dominion and replenish a dark world with light. People, I need you to understand that life is not a series of God blessing you or the devil cursing you. Life is a journey. And along the journey, you will experience the cycle of seasons of life. It's a fact that you will experience times of night, but you must prepare because daytime is coming. Along your journey, pick up jewels of wisdom and grow your understanding. Plant good seeds, which will grow and gives us good fruit in its perfect season. Win the day. Don't stop moving. Cry if you have to. Cry with those who cry. Help your brothers and sisters through their night season. You claim to have Bible knowledge, but you don't. What you have are church cliches, 
sayings that have been passed down like God won't put more on you than you can bear, or God can put you through pain to test you. Really? So you're saying that God loves me, but he puts pain on me so I can love him more. That sounds really dumb. Would you put your child in a room with a hungry pit bull? Jesus said, if your child asked for bread, would you give him a stone? If he asked for fish, would you give him a scorpion? Hope not. The reason your world is in chaos is because you don't understand your identity. You are gods, but you walk around in darkness. Arise, manifest your light, take dominion, be fruitful, multiply, and replenish a dark world with light. Black people need to laugh. The pain and agony of life has robbed you of your joy in religion, and it has turned your heart into stone. Find your joy. Life is making you sick. Laughter is medicine. What happens when a man meets death? When a man watches death, death becomes planted in his soul, so he sees visions of death his entire life. He relives the horror all over again. Imagine going to a funeral in a graveyard every day. Darkness has entered your soul. You need light. There is a buried treasure, and you must locate it. To the God Kingdom, this message is for the children of the Most High Humanity, and it is the species that is both spirit and matter. The end-time prophecy of your favorite TV preacher, Bible commentary, and televangelist was wrong. The fifth final beast is falling. The world will face judgment for the tribulation period, worshiping the beast and his image in the form of storms and earthquakes as in the days of Noah. But the kings and priests will reign forever. Those who are with light will rebuild the desolate places. Be the ark for your family and loved ones in these tough times. Fear not. Divine protection is your right as a child of the Most High. To the lost gods of the earth, we have been under the rule of the beast since the fall of Rome. This was a slavery-style system where a man was worshipped as God, as in ancient Egypt. God delivered the children out of slavery and empowered them to take over Canaan. The image of man worship was so deep in the mind, they feared independence and could not see themselves as landowners and warriors. We have been taught to worship a man, and now are faced with the same inward struggle. We work ourselves to death to pay landowners. The beast has enslaved our neglected and feminized our strong, and we still find ourselves on the plantation. But we are of the Joshua generations. We will rise up and take the land. You will dominate your industry. Be fruitful and multiply yourself by learning and teaching. You will replenish a dark world with light. You are gods. We need your light. God is the giver of gifts. He has given you a gift but life. Your family, your religious organizations has convinced you to bury your gift in the earth inside you. You have been convinced to place your light under a bush, a fruitless tree. Your gift is your light to the world. You need your light. Sing your song, dance your dance, write your poems, and build your building. Whatever your gift is, whatever your light is, share it with the world. It's your purpose in life. The Mind of God Nothing can stop the mind of God. Whatever you imagine, think on, focus on, visualize, will manifest. The Most High says even He can't stop your thoughts. The soul mind is the most powerful force in the universe. When evil gets planted into the soul, you visualize those painful moments. All babies are born innocent. It's their experiences that ultimately determine behavior. So if seeds of violence, poverty, death, darkness gets planted into the soul, they will grow and produce those evil fruits, evil conduct, and behaviors. But you are gods. You are not the pain of your past. You are the creator of your future. Think on these things that are lovely. Think on those beautiful things, and they will manifest. To the warrior, protectors. For those who have the light of a warrior, protector, police, soldiers, and street soldiers, the Most High has given you this light, gift, talent. He has made you strong with the heart and desire you protect the weak. Cain in the Bible had this light. Cain felt like God favored one brother over the other. This thought planted the seed of hate in his soul. Cain murdered his brother Abel, the very person he was created to protect. He killed. God visited Cain regarding the blood of his brother. God will also visit you regarding the blood of your brother. You are your brother's keeper. This is your light. This is your calling. This is your purpose. To the gods of the earth, historically the gatekeepers of information have been able to withhold knowledge for their own selfish gain. But this is not that day. With the internet, libraries, teachings from the elders, you have access to all information. Understand that your true identity is the God spirit that is inside the body. You have access to all the spiritual wisdom. The problem is your mind. 
You don't know who you are. You mentally see yourself as good or bad, black or white, Republican or Democrat, Jew or Gentile, Christian or any other religion, social group. But you are a God, a child of the Most High. The earth is your inheritance. The land is yours. Dominate your industry. Be fruitful and multiply yourself by learning and teaching and replenish a dark world with light. This is your purpose in life, the very reason you were created, the very reason you are still alive. This is why the church is so confused. They preach a Bible they don't understand. The Bible is not about religious practices and dogma. Satan does not care if your worship is real or if you keep the law of Moses. Jesus did not come to set up a new religion. He came to free you from its bondage. Religion makes you hate your brother. It's the creator of hateful hearts of stone. Jesus came to seek and save what was lost. There is a buried treasure lost in the earth. And once it is located, your world will never be the same. Jesus said, the kingdom of God is in all men. The body is your earth. The spirit, you, the mover of the body and the thinker of your thoughts is the buried treasure. The kingdom is not a place, but a people. You are not just mankind full of weaknesses and shortcomings. You are gods, children of the most high. Nothing in the universe can stop you. Not racism, not poverty, not government, not your family, not your past hurts, not fallen angels or demons. You must dominate your industry and your thoughts. Be fruitful and multiply yourself by learning and teaching and replenish your dark world with light. Rise up, you gods, and take the world. It's your inheritance. Black music is black magic. Society has labeled everything black evil. But how can they sing while in a strange land? How do a people who face with the most treacherous, evil, heartless, demonic, vindictive system of the world has ever seen survive? How does a people survive a system which says the Savior has sent them to kill you? A people who saw a level of evil in which it would be hard to believe good exists. Survive. Black magic. Black music. This magic has helped us survive the plantation, the prison system, Jim Crow, the Klan, the war on drugs, crack, poverty, and the projects. But our songs of freedom has become the soundtrack to our enslavements. To the musicians and singers, sound is a spirit light. You don't create sound, you manipulate it. You are the magician. This is your gift. The world needs your songs of freedom, songs of beauty, songs of love, songs of war, songs of peace, our very survival depends on your light. To the God King, a king must be trained as a king teaches his young prince and prepares him to rule his own kingdom. A king must be given vision. He is guided by his vision of himself. If he thinks he is weak, dumb, a thug, hateful, a violent savage, it is what he becomes. That's what you manifest. You must understand you are a God, a seed of the Most High. That's the spirit you. You must train the soul and the body to be strong. You are God. You are king. Dominate your industry and your thoughts. Be fruitful and multiply yourself by learning and teaching and replenish a dark world with light. Know who you are. It doesn't matter how beautiful of a person you try to be. There will always be people trying to point out your ugliness. Religion says, he is a sinner, but I'm a saint. He is evil, but I am good. I keep the law, they break the law, and they deserve death. But the truth of the matter is, no one can define you but the creator of all. And he says, you are strong, fearless, mighty, brilliant, love, a seat of the most high God. Let them talk. Let them throw their stones. It doesn't matter what they say. The only thing that matters is what you believe. You are God's. You are not your past mistakes as religion tries to keep reminding you with their stones. Dominate your industry, your thoughts. Be fruitful and multiply yourself by learning and teaching and replenish a dark world with light. The pain of the black soul. They say, why are black people so angry? The reason this question still goes unanswered is because your favorite philosopher, guru, minister, baba, apostle, pastor, prophet, life coach, TV personality, does not understand soul, and you still think it's the devil. No, the soul functions as a soil. So if a people experience trauma, slavery, rape, murder, Jim Crow, crack, wars, racism, destruction, poverty, prison complex slavery systems, war on drugs, hate, I can go on and on. These are the seeds that will produce fruit. The victim becomes the perpetrator. But you must understand, you are gods. You must guard your heart because its contents will flow out. If you meditate, constantly think on and relive the pain, pain is what you will continue to experience. And that determines your mood and attitude. People who are always angry, 
has been through painful moments and has never been taught who they are and that they are the caretaker of their soul. You are gods. Dominate your industry and your thoughts. Be fruitful and multiply yourself by learning and teaching and replenish a dark world with light. The Religious Outfit Jesus taught a parable of the Good Samaritan, Good Neighbor. In the parable, a man was beat up and bruised lying on the side of the road. Jesus talked about the religious outfits who walked on the other side, not even offering their brother a helping hand. Maybe they felt the stranger deserved what he got. Maybe God was punishing him or something that they thought. But the Good Neighbor asked no questions. He had compassion for his wounded brother. It's nothing worse than being alone in a crazy cold world. Life has left us battered and bruised at one point or another. Show love. God is love. White rage and black savages. Are babies born evil? What is man? I have never seen a newborn wanting to watch another baby die. We see in the world what I call fruit. Fruit is conduct and behavior. So we see the violence. We see the hate. We see the death. We see the murders and the rapes. All the evil in the world. But what is the seed, the root cause? It's not the devil committing acts of violence. Satan couldn't make any hat to deceive. So why does Cain hate his brother? I mean, they're brothers. They came from the same source. The father, the earth, the Adam. Cain and Abel were from the same source. So what caused Cain to hate his brother? The start of a new generation. Our ancestors had all identity of themselves removed because in order to keep a man a slave, you must get him to believe that he is a slave. We continue to search for identity and acceptance, so we pledge allegiance to flags, religious groups, social groups, etc. We are not of that generation. Our generation will understand our only allegiance is to our father, our family, and our neighbors. You are gods. The world is your inheritance. Dominate your industry and your thoughts. Be fruitful and multiply yourself by learning and teaching and replenish a dark world with light. Peace. The Legacy of Black People As Africans in America, we really don't have a true visual legacy. Our ancestors didn't know if they were going to live to see the sun, let alone see a life for their children's children. All they knew was pain. Traumatic experiences were just as common as seeing the moon. The tribulation period was the worst period the earth has ever seen. Their vision was on survival. The blood of the innocent painted on the earth. The beast waged war on the seed of the woman. The Moses generation was also freed from the hands of slavery, but could not escape the chains of the soul in order to take over the promised land. So they died wandering in circles, never experiencing what the Most High prepared for them. But you are the Joshua generation. Arise, you gods. Dominate your industry and your thoughts. Be fruitful and multiply yourself by learning and teaching and replenish a dark world with light. We pledge allegiance to our father, our family, and our neighbors. The beast said, out of chaos comes order. But you are gods. We understand that a god sets order to the chaos. We only pledge our allegiance to our father, our family, and our neighbors. Black love. We find ourselves being ashamed of us. Ashamed of the skin God gave us. Ashamed of our ancestors. I hear people say, we are not our ancestors. We wouldn't take it as though they allowed it to happen. The world had never seen such evil. It was the tribulation. I don't care what the theologians say. We find ourselves apologizing for and being ashamed of our street soldiers and the war that they were born into and did not ask for. But the outlaws of the cowboy era are celebrated. We don't appreciate us. What we survived, our music, culture, our vibe, our resilience, gets overlooked. We have faced hell, but we keep on fighting. Black people are the lost coin Jesus spoke about in the parable. We are lost and don't understand our value, but you are gods. Dominate your industry and your thoughts. Be fruitful and multiply yourself by learning and teaching. Replenish a dark world with light. To the God King. You are the seed carrier. You are the creator of legacy. You are the king and have the responsibility of building your own kingdom. You have a responsibility to protect and guide your seed. It's your seed. You plant your seed in the earth. She gives life to it and gives it back to you. You are the light for your children. You cannot leave your kids alone in this dark world. You must teach them. You must sow seeds of love and vision into them. This is your created purpose. The Most High will judge you according to what you did with the gifts he has given you. Lead, protect, and provide. The Black Christian. It's amazing to see how many naive black Christians are. They say this is not how a Christian acts or this is not Christian ethics. And I just shake my head. 
What Christianity have you been researching for the last thousand years? We pretend that we didn't see the burning of crosses on the lawns of innocent people. Let's start off with the fact that Jesus never came to start a new religion called Christianity. This was Satan's deception to get the children of the Most High humanity to worship the image of a man instead of the Father of all creation. As a matter of fact, in Matthew 24, Jesus says people are going to come in in his name claiming to be prophets of his and kill the innocent and rule the world. The historic ethics and actions of people who carry the Christian flag, worshippers of the beast system, and the image is well documented. It's called the colonization, European imperialism, the crusaders movement, slavery, Jim Crow. I can go on and on. There's a long trail of blood attached to the name Christianity and the Christian flag. These people don't speak for Jesus. Jesus healed the sick, raised the dead, gave to the poor. Christianity has infected people with diseases, Tuskegee experiment, experimenting on slaves, vaccines across the world, smallpox, AIDS, etc. Killed millions worldwide since the fall of Rome, and their greed has turned the land of plenty into a desolate place, and people are starving. This is the Antichrist system. Be free from the bondage and chains of the beast, the religious system. You are not a social group. You are gods and children of the Most High. We protect the innocent, not hang them for a noose. We feed the poor, not take away their ability to eat. You are of the God Kingdom. The world is your inheritance. Dominate your industry and your thoughts. Be fruitful and multiply yourself by learning and teaching and replenish a dark world with light. We pledge allegiance to our father, our family, and our neighbor. These people talk about the Bible. They say stand on the word, trust in the word. The reason your life sucks is because you don't believe the Bible. But I'm convinced they never read it. They don't understand the meaning. You mean God would create a world, give meaning and purpose, develop a system for everything under the heaven like the sun and the moon, nature as whole, the animal kingdom, the planets, etc. And his greatest creation, his very own children, still don't understand purpose and identity. You were created to serve Jesus, fight the devil, and hope to get into heaven. That would be such a waste of time. The Bible is about the children of the Most High losing connection in their identity. They are spiritual laws in the universe such as gravity, the law of lift. One of those laws is called sin and death. This law says sin, disobey God, kingdom law, causes death, natural punishment, judgment, wrath, and spiritual punishment, disconnection from the Father, the spirit world, heaven, spiritual identity, and etc. Jesus the innocent gave his lifeblood to pay for the original sin that caused all descendants of Adam to have a weakness of their flesh and being disconnected from God, thus giving them wrath for sinning. You're not created to serve the image of a man, a religious system, or any system. You are gods, children of the Most High. The earth is your inheritance. Dominate your industry and your thoughts. Be fruitful and multiply yourself by learning and teaching and replenish a dark world with light. We pledge allegiance to our Father, our family, our neighbors. We are the God Kingdom. The Broken Hearts of Black People Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Let's just say the claims of Christianity are if you live and devote your life to serving Jesus, he will come to your aid when you're in trouble, give you a blessing when you need it, and come take you home to heaven if you kept all the commandments. Okay, my major question is, who has been more devoted to Jesus than black people? I mean, if this ideology says that if you worship and praise his name, he would take your heavy burden from you. But we see that black people still seem to carry the heaviest burden. What's the problem? Has he not heard you? It must be your fault you're still facing the same pain. You must be a cursed people. Jesus is letting you face trauma to teach you a lesson. Black people have been hoping and praying and praying and hoping for generations and still face the same pain. And now heart sickness has set in. You walk around like a people with no hope and no purpose. The truth of the matter is you have high expectations on wrong information. Jesus said it is finished. He was born to fulfill his purpose, and that was to locate and connect the lost children back to their father. He never claimed to come fix your life. He came to give the sons of God the keys, the tools, principles, and understanding to both heaven and earth. You don't know who you are. Arise, you gods. Set order to both your mind and body. Set order to your world. Dominate your industry and your thoughts. Be fruitful and multiply yourself by learning and teaching and replenish a dark world with light. The Black Diamonds If fire and pressure creates diamonds, 
black people have faced more painful moments and pressure than any other group. Our diamonds are blues, gospel, rock and roll, country, jazz, disco, R&B, reggae, hip hop, trap hop, and drill. Music sets vibrations, mood, temperature, and feeling in the soul. Understanding that you are the master of both soul and body, you must use these vibrations to your advantage. If your life is giving you war, set your vibrations for peace. It is time for war. Aggressive vibrations help prepare the soul for battle. You are gods. Dominate your industry and your thoughts. Be fruitful and multiply yourself by learning and teaching and replenish your dark world with light. The New Birth Experience I hear the way the religious system explains the New Birth Experience. It simply makes no sense. So God created a world, put you in it, so just, just so Jesus can save you just so Jesus can save you from it. Hey, that really makes no sense. How about this? God created a world and gave it to his children, and they lost identity and understanding of the spirit of the world. Jesus came to restore access to the spirit of the world and their father. And the moment you realize who you really are, the real you, the inward man, the kingdom of God, the thinker of thought, the mover of your body, then you become born spiritually. The moment you understand your God spirit self, it is the start of your new life. You are not your past pain and mistakes. You are not the things that happened to you or the things you have done. You are God's, children of the Most High. You are the God kingdom. Be one with light. Dominate your industry and your thoughts. Be fruitful and multiply yourself by learning and teaching and replenish a dark world with light. White terrorist. I find it strange that when a white terrorist rapes and murders millions of innocent people, shoot up a movie theater, a school full of innocent children, kill innocent elderly churchgoers, etc., we say pray and we forgive. But when our own people born in urban poverty and warfare and find themselves doing whatever it takes to survive, they are savages, demons, thugs, and animals. We have no compassion for them. One day, we will wake up and realize that Jesus said, In my name, false prophets will arise. Matthew 24. Wake up, people. No prophet came in the name of Jesus. Satan tricked humanity into worshiping the image of a white man and told you it was Jesus. And the worshipers of this image has ruled the world since the fall of the Roman Empire. They have tortured man, women, and children for centuries. Jesus called himself our brother, not our God. You are gods and children of the Most High. You are not a slave to any religious or social system. Be one with light. Be one with your Father. Locating the Black Man It's amazing to see how little we understand about ourselves. Religion spends its time marveling over the exploits of others. We spend hours talking about what Moses did, Ruth did, Paul did, what Jesus did, and so on, which is cool. But when it comes to you, your purpose and identity, they say, trust Jesus. He will reveal your purpose to you. That's a nice way of saying they have no idea. So how can you tell a slave his solution is Jesus when your slave master says Jesus told me to kill you and he kills you and your family? Stop lying on Jesus. It's like we go to church or the mosque on a regular. You pay tithes and pray, but you still don't understand yourself, who you are, and why your father created you. See, the religious system runs out on guilt. If you can make a person feel unworthy of love, they will devalue themselves. This is how you bind the strong man. The law of the mind says, as you think, you are or you will become. So now you are self-checked. You see yourself as flawed, and that's all you produce. But understand truth. Truth is, you are gods, children of the Most High. You are not a slave, a sinner, or unclean flesh. Who cares what they say? Be one with light. Be one with the Father. Dominate your industry and your thoughts. Be fruitful and multiply yourself by learning and teaching and replenish a dark world with light. The Apostle to the Gentile the Apostle Paul was a Benjamite, a black man who looks like an Egyptian, a Hebrew, a natural descendant of Abraham, and an enforcer of the Law of Moses. Anybody who opposed the Law of Moses, Saul, would see their deaths. He was a religious ruler. Saul was on his way to kill more detractors on the Law of Moses when the light came to him. He realized that he was persecuting the family of God. He begins to share his newfound life with other Hebrews in order to free them from the bondage and chains of religious servitude and freedom in Christ. The religious began to beat the Apostle Paul on numerous occasions for sharing truth. So he began to take this message of freedom to the non-natural descendants of Abraham, the Gentile. Abraham made a blood covenant with the Most High, giving the Father permission to have contact with the descendants of Abraham. The Lamb paved for the new covenant with his blood, which allows all of humanity to be reconnected with their spiritual father. We are all born of the same source. We are spirit and matter. God is our father, and earth is our mother. Be one with your father. Be one with light. And light up 
this dark world. Judgment. So what happens when an evil system trains soldiers to uphold their evil system? We see in our world cause and effect, seed time and harvest, summer, winter, etc. The fact is that evil system has been ruling the world since the fall of Rome. The first step in judgment is bringing light to it. For centuries, this system has been operating with impunity because we just didn't know. We didn't have access to information, but now we do. The system that kills the children of the Most High, steals hope from the poor, and destroys and makes desolate the Garden of God, has trained soldiers to carry out their evil plan and practices, but judgment has come. Rebel The world was not created to be ruled by evil people. The evil one has convinced you that the stranger and your enemy are your brothers. We pledge allegiance to our enemies, flags, social groups, but completely disregard our own family and our own neighbors. But we are of the Joshua generation. We will rebel this evil system. We will defeat these giants. We pledge allegiance to our father, our family, and our neighbors. Any person that seeks to harm you, your family, or your neighbors is your enemy. Regardless of your race, religion, or social group, the judgment of this world is the responsibility of the children of God. He created the world and gave it to you. Give me liberty or death. The Power of the Soul As a man thinks, so he is and so he draws to himself. The soul is the most powerful force in the universe. So if you believe that Satan is more powerful being than yourself, if you think that he has the ability to impact your life in any way, that will be your reality. But if you understand that you are a god, he is an angel, you are a king, he is a servant, you are a god kingdom and he is an angelic kingdom, you are the child of the most high god, you will dominate your industry and your thoughts. You will be fruitful and multiply yourself by learning and teaching. You will replenish this dark world with your light. Be filled with his love. Be filled with his peace. Be filled with his joy. Be filled with his light. He is your father, spirit, God. She is your mother, physical matter, earth. Know your enemy. Satan is not out here committing evil. He planted the seed and humanity carries out the act. So he planted the seed of evil in the mind, hearts, and soul of humanity. Then humanity has spread the seed throughout creation. Hurt people hurt people. So your fight is not the devil. Your fight is, what do I do when pain comes? Yes, you were molested. Yes, you were raped. Yes, you were born in poverty. Yes, you didn't have your father or mother. Yes, your life is in chaos right now. Now what? These things happen to you. They are not who you are. You are God's ruler of the life and children of the Most High. Nothing in the universe can stop you but you. Dominate your industry and your thoughts. Be fruitful and multiply yourself by learning and teaching and replenish a dark world with your love and light. Strange Doctrines It's amazing that people still listen to the strange doctrine from your favorite gurus. They love to tell you they speak to God on your behalf. They love to tell you your life sucks because you're an evil sinner and you must earn the mercy of Jesus, or how God gives you pain and heartache to teach you lessons or to humble you, or how God is going to bless you if you don't sin, but if you do, he is going to curse you. My people, would you put your child in a room with an angry pit bull to see if she or she was going to serve you and trust you? What are you listening to? It's time to drop the wisdom of men and serpents. God is your father. You are not his servant. You are his child. He is not giving you pain to figure out if he loves you or not. He created the world and gave it to you, but there are giants in your lands, the evil system of man worship, greed, racism, unjust, and unfair man-made laws. You must wake up. Arise, you gods, children of the Most High God, and take the land, dominate your industry and your thoughts. Be fruitful and multiply yourself by learning and teaching, and replenish this dark world with your light and your love. Protect the weak, feed the poor, rebuild the desolate places, pledge allegiance to your father, your family, your neighbors. The world is yours. Protect the queen. It was not good for man to be alone, so he split the atoms, male and female. The solution for humanity is man's loneliness was not Jesus. This is the false Christ message. It was woman, the God Queen. Religion has put the Queen in the back of the room. So now she spends the time talking to snakes while men spend time worshiping other men. Protect her. She is the helpmate, the source of life and water, the tree that bears good fruit for humanity. God lost connection with his children, humanity, and sacrificed one son, Jesus, to save the family. Bow in worship to no man, no guru, no minister, pastor, prophet, master, teacher, sage, etc. You are God's ruler of your kingdom, children of the Most High. She is your mother. She is your queen. She is God, female ruler. 
To the king, your past pains and trials were your lion and bear preparing you for Goliath. You are strong, you are fearless, you are gods, children of the Most High God. No angel, no devil, no system could stop you. But don't worship the image of a man. We only pledge allegiance to our father, our family, and our neighbors. Dominate your industry, your thoughts. Be fruitful and multiply yourself by learning and teaching. Defeat your giants and take the land. Chapter 9, Proverbs for the King A GKP proverb There's a time for war and a time for peace. This is the nature law of the kingdom of men. Prepare yourself for war, but learn to live in peace is the law of the kingdom of the gods. A GKP proverb Never engage in a battle if you're not willing and prepared for war. A GKP proverb Know your enemy. Your enemy is anyone who seeks to harm you, your family, and your neighbors. A GKP proverb. Never pledge allegiance to any systems or social groups. Those are fruitless, dead trees that bear no fruit, a non-living organism. Pledge allegiance to our father, our family, and our neighbors, for this is the temple of God and not buildings made by the hands of man. A GKP proverb for the young king. A young prince will grow into a strong king. His life will be the results of how he develops and harnesses his strength. He must be taught his identity as a child of the Most High, his God Spirit Self. He must be taught to develop a strong mind and body. He must be trained for war and for peace. This is his guiding light. You are his teacher and guide. A GKP proverb. Never bow down to a man. A man born of a woman is your brother. He only bows to his queen and his heavenly father. A GKP proverb, never be taught by a teacher who has not developed his own perspectives. He is regurgitating information and has not properly inspected the wisdom he has received. His wisdom and teachings is poison to the soul. Do not eat it. A GKP proverb, never follow a leader who has never shown compassion for his followers. For he is a blind man who only sees his own gain. This person cannot be guiding light to you. He can't see you. A GKP proverb, never find entertainment in horror, murder, and pain. Your entertainment is another's real-life nightmare. A GKP proverb, never argue religion with a man who does not understand identity and purpose. Freedom is foreign to him. He will fight you in order to remain a slave. A GKP proverb, if you offer a man peace and he returns war to you, if you offer him light and he returns darkness to you, Flee this person. He is too close to you. He is a potential enemy to you, for he has not mastered the raging storms of his soul. He will drown you, suffocating you of all your life energy. A GKP proverb. Only a fool asks for strength when he is clearly created strong. This man will die on the battlefield because he has a loaded weapon, but doesn't know how to use it. A GKP proverb. The wise inspects all things before eating but the fool digests doctrines they don't understand. A GKP proverb, never argue with a fool, for he is not a seeker of truth. He takes pleasure in foolery. A GKP proverb, a fool avoids his own reflections, but the wise sees God in the mirror. A GKP proverb, wisdom is a buried treasure. Once discovered, it becomes the tree of life. A GKP proverb, a man who is afraid of war need not be on the battlefield. He must tend to the sheep. He is a soldier but fighting the wrong war. A GKP proverb. The wise values life and time, but the fool lives life as a car with no steering wheel. A GKP proverb. The wise seeks laughter for his medicine, but the fool trades joy for slavery and bondage. A GKP proverb. The wise men seek the cave after battle, but the fool never leaves the battlefield. He will die a thousand deaths. A GKP proverb. A wise king never leaves for battle unless he is prepared and has counted the cost, but the fool can't control his anger and dies a thousand deaths. A GKP proverb. What is a Muslim to a Christian when they both have the same father? A GKP proverb. The wise king understands the young prince needs training, love, and lessons, but the fool gives his son a stone instead of bread. A GKP proverb, a blind judge that can't see right or wrong, can't give verdict in the courts of the God kingdom. He must be removed by the children of God. 
A GKP proverb, never waste time trying to explain your vision to a fool because he will convince you of your need for new glasses. A GKP proverb, the fool will risk his starving life for a meal, but the wise king plants seeds and waits for harvest. A GKP proverb, a fool prays for snow in the summertime, but the wise owns a coat and enjoys the sun. A GKP proverb, the fool prays for peace on the battlefield, he is already dead. A GKP proverb, a wise man learns never plant seeds into fields he cannot maintain. A GKP proverb, the wise man sees past pains and pressure as training for battle. The fool is still afraid of the battlefield. A GKP proverb, a fool with no vision asks a lost man for directions, but the wise man reviews his compass and his map. A GKP proverb, the fool listens to the wisdom of angels, but a god ignores his folly. A GKP proverb, the foolish king fights wars for his enemies, and the enemy steals the kingdom of the fool, but the wise king protects his kingdom from his enemies. A GKP proverb, the fool does a deal with a thief he called his brother, the wise man never does deals with thieves. A GKP proverb, the fool loses his temper when his house is hot, but the wise understands he controls the temperature of his house. A GKP proverb, when the image of God is revealed to a man, the God will never again see himself as a man. A GKP proverb, the foolish man pushes love away because he doesn't understand it. It's foreign to him, but the wise man learns to love. A GKP proverb, the foolish king ignores the lessons of the old fool, but the lessons of the old fool makes a wise king grow in wisdom. A GKP proverb, the fool plays with snakes and blames the snake for biting him, the wise understands that snakes don't play. A GKP proverb. A fool complains about the night, but the wise prepare for the day. A GKP proverb. If a man gives his children a house, the children are in charge of the house. A GKP proverb. The thief convinced the fool that his brother was his enemy in order to steal the family treasure. The wise never listens to thieves. A GKP proverb. The wise man keeps his well full because he needs water. The fool drains his well of her water and dies of thirst. A GKP proverb. The prince learns two important lessons in observing the king. What to do and what not to do as a king. Nature teaches him this lesson. The lessons must be valued as a son is nurtured by his mother. A GKP proverb. The fool seeks to change the rules of the game he can't win. A wise man never plays the game before understanding the rules. A GKP proverb, a wise warrior never takes leadership of a coward. Fear can't lead strength. The fool gives his sword to the coward. A GKP proverb, the fool searches for truth in the dark, but to the wise, truth is light. A GKP proverb, the fool says the thief stole my time, but the wise say it's foolish to waste time. A GKP proverb, the fool waits for God to give him more gifts, but the wise multiply the gifts he was given. A GKP proverb, if you want to learn the lion, study the animal kingdom. If you want to learn the children of God, study the God kingdom philosophy. A GKP proverb, the fool remains a slave to the old system, but he who learns the old and then creates his own becomes a wise king. A GKP proverb, the foolish farmer waits for the rain to water his garden, but the wise waters his own. A GKP proverb, the fool says he knows all things, but the wise knows nothing and continues to learn. A GKP proverb, the fool is educated by the congregation of clowns, but the wise see the circus as his entertainment. A GKP proverb, the fool wants the love of his enemy because he forgot his watch, but the wise understands time of war. A GKP proverb, if my neighbor is the friend of my enemy, he can no longer be my neighbor. A GKP proverb, the evil general sends his neighbor's son to war, but the wise general teaches his son to protect his innocent neighbors. A GKP proverb. The fool gambles in search of riches, but the wise never gambles what he is not prepared to lose. A GKP proverb. He who begs for mercy on the battlefield becomes a slave, but he who dies on the battlefield will forever be free. A GKP proverb. Never let a court jester or clown lead the good soldier. 
He doesn't understand the seriousness of the battle, and the war will never be funny. A GKP proverb, those who die protecting the innocent will get a crown from their father, but those who kill the innocent will see the fiery womb of their mother. A GPK proverb, gold will never bring you wisdom, but wisdom will bring you lots of gold. A GKP proverb, the fool hates his teacher, but the wise is a willing student and learns the lessons. A GKP proverb, the wisdom of fools sounds brilliant to the foolish, but the wise understands it's foolish to waste time with fools. A GKP proverb, in the times of darkness, the angels drove the kingdom of men, but the light has come, and the kingdom of God will rule and overthrow the kingdom of men because they are the light and the earth is his inheritance. A GKP proverb, the soul is the lamp. If it has no light, the house will be dark. A GKP proverb, the fool asks his enemy to teach him the rules of war, but the wise understands his enemy is his enemy. A GKP, a GKP proverb, the enemy told the fool life is but a game, but the wise understands life is war and games are only played with family and neighbors. A GKP proverb, the fool allows his enemy to teach him good from evil. The wise knows his enemy is good at his evil. A GKP proverb, the religious man told the slave that he is a slave, and the slave told the religious, at least I can see my nice chains, but the wise king knows no bondage. A GKP proverb, your enemy killed the stranger and told the stranger you was his enemy. Now the enemy owns your house and the house of the stranger. A GKP proverb, the king sees himself winning the war before he ever goes to battle, but the fool goes to the battlefield to see if his enemy wants to be a friend. A GKP proverb, the wise man knows his brother and his neighbors. The fool seeks comfort among strangers and enemies. A GKP proverb, if your neighbor doesn't help you fight the enemy, he is your enemy and can no longer be your neighbor. A GKP proverb, if your leader is friends with your enemy, you are being led to your death. A GKP proverb, the fool allows his enemy to tell him he needs no weapons, but the wise understands that weapons are used to protect his family and his neighbors from the enemy. A GKP proverb, if he is not your neighbor or your brother, he is a stranger. If he seeks to harm your brother or your neighbor, he is your enemy. A GKP proverb, the fool is a slave to the ancient teachings, but the wise learns the free lessons and builds his own kingdom. A GKP proverb, I would rather spend one day with the wise man because he possesses seeds of wisdom than 1,000 days with the foolish man because he possesses seeds of foolery. A GKP proverb, the thief lies to the fool in order to steal the treasure in his house, but the wise understands that thieves also lie. A GKP proverb, the fool reveals his treasure to the stranger. The wise is courteous to the stranger, but never forget he is a stranger. A GKP proverb, the men who learns and understands my teachings can never be a follower in the kingdom of men because he is the kingdom of God. A GKP proverb, the fool says there is no God. If there is, prove it to the wise man. The wise man gives him this parable. If you want to learn your father, study the heavens. If you want to learn of your mother, study the earth. A GKP proverb, if your belly is fat and your neighbor is starving, he will hate you. But if you feed your neighbor, you can together defeat the enemy. A GKP proverb. The king who scorns the prince is a fool. He will bring agony to his bones when he's old. But the wise king loves the prince, and the prince will always love his king. A GKP proverb. A smile from the enemy disarms the fool, but the wise never laughs on the battlefield. A GKP proverb. During dark times in the kingdom of men, the strong dominates the weak. But in the kingdom of gods, the strong protects the weak and teaches him to be strong. A GKP proverb. Video games can help strengthen the mind of the young prince, teaching him skills like building cities and strategies of war. Sports teach his body to be strong and to care for his neighbors. A strong mind and body will prepare the prince. He will build a great kingdom. A GKP proverb. The evil one told the fool his neighbor was his enemy and his enemy was his brother. 
but the wise understands that his neighbor's enemy is also his enemy. A GKP proverb, the foolish army broadcast their strategies of war to their enemy because they believe their enemy will grow to love them, but the wise understands the enemy will never love him and to never tell the enemy anything. A GKP proverb, the fool loves his enemy and then forgets it's his enemy, but the wise loves his neighbors and they fight the enemy. A GKP proverb, if your brother, your neighbor, and the stranger are friends of your enemy, you are all alone in the world. But if your brother and your neighbor share the same enemy, you are the kingdom of gods and you will dominate your enemy. A GKP proverb, if your enemy has a sword, you, your family, and your neighbor should have a sword. If your enemy has guns, you, your family, and your neighbor should have guns. A GKP proverb, the fool gives all his money to the stranger and the enemy, but the wise share his earnings with his family and neighbors. Chapter 10, Understanding the Queen Introduction of the God Queen Most books that I have read, both religious and secular, seem to spend more time telling a woman how she should look or behave, never exploring her true identity. As we learned in the previous letters, we are not our bodies and we are not our minds. We are God's spirits made in the image and likeness of the Most High. We have a body and we have a soul, and it is up to us to control them both. The God Kingdom philosophy answers questions such as, Why did the snake reach out to the woman? Why was the God Queen chosen to be a life carrier? Why the God Queen was called the helpmate? Why did Christ have so many personal interactions with women? Why was the New Testament church told that they must take care of the widow, single mother? Why do the scriptures say the woman is responsible for building her house? Growing up, one of my favorite cartoons and comic books were the X-Men. One of the characters that always stuck out in my mind was the Phoenix character. Like the Phoenix, the God Queen may be one of the strongest single energy forces in the universe. With the ability to nurture and build her house, family, next generation of God Kings and God Queens, we see one of her created gifts on display. She is a life carrier. She is Earth. The seed has no life until it's planted in the Earth. The God Queen takes seed, which has been given to her, multiplies them, and projects them back into the universe. So if she is filled with heartache and pain, that is what she is going to multiply and return to the world in a great measure. This is not just of the physical seed given to her by a male seed sperm, but emotional seeds given to her by life. As we can see, when a woman is pregnant, energy is taken from her and provided to the child in her womb. If she is sick, filled with stress, have a poor diet, or partakes in harmful activities while with child, the baby also receives the same thing. This is why she can hear of a heartbreaking event, and she becomes sad without even personally knowing the victims. She has internalized that emotion and has become pregnant with that pain. Whatever she is pregnant with, she will deliver. The Christ has numerous encounters with women, but for now we will focus on the woman with the issue of blood for 12 years and the woman at the well. Feel free to read up on the story in details in scripture, but I will say I don't share the perspectives of most theologians and biblical scholars at all regarding biblical interpretations, but that's a discussion for another day. Christ specifically reached out to these women, as we will understand later what role the Christ played in scripture, and it was not to rule as king over mankind, but to restore the identity of the lost kingdom of gods of the earth, the God kingdom. The woman was losing blood for 12 years, and no man, doctor, or angel could help her. As we get into the God Kingdom numerology that I have also developed, we will understand the significance of the number 12. But for now, we will focus on her loss of blood. Blood represents life energy leaving from her. Christ healed her. Christ offered the woman at the well water to prevent her from ever being thirsty again. If you review the story, the woman found herself in various relationships but none could quench her thirst for love and acceptance. The woman gives of herself. The very life energy she has flows through her and out to the universe. If she is not refilled and replenished, she will find herself empty, dehydrated, losing the very life energy blood in which the universe relies on. The very nature of the God Queen is to nurture. Giving love, nurture, and compassion is natural for her because it is an essential attribute in carrying life, both physical and emotional. She must be replenished of that same love and care that she gives out, or she will die emotionally. 
The God Queen has the power to affect humanity more than any other force in our universe. As a farmer would protect his field, he has placed seed in, so the heart of the God Queen must be protected in the same manner. Whether or not we are talking about a young queen or a more seasoned queen, their nature is the same. We can tell what seed has been planted in her by the fruit she displays. If we plant an apple seed into the earth, we know that we will get an apple tree and apples. The God Queen has the power to affect humanity more than any other force in our universe. As a farmer would protect his field he has planted seed in, so the heart of the God Queen must be protected in the same manner. Whether or not we are talking about a young queen or a more seasoned queen, their nature is the same. We can tell what seed has been planted in her by the fruit she displays. If we plant an apple seed into the earth, we know that we will get an apple tree and apples. When we see the God Queen showing anger, frustration, craziness, cruelty, outrageous behaviors, etc., we understand that she has been filled with heartbreaking moments. Seeds of pain have been planted into her field, and we see her fruit. Those trees of pain must be uprooted and replaced. She must be filled with love and beauty. Long peaceful walks, soft music, art, and observing the beauty of nature will go a long way in replenishing her. But nothing will replenish her more than the water of the spirit, being one with light. This means that she must understand that she is created by the Most High and that she is designed with purpose. She cannot be defined by society or her past experience, but by her Creator. She is the life energy of the universe, and she must see herself as such. To the God Queen, when pain enters your soul, he leaves a package. This package may leave you questioning life and send you on an evil search for meaning and identity. You lost your sight of who you are and start seeing yourself through the eyes of others, celebrities, family, church, spiritual leaders, whatever organization you belong to, etc. The snake sent the woman on a search for godlike knowledge. This was her downfall. You are the daughter of the Most High. You are the source of life in the universe. You have access to all the wisdom both in heaven and earth. Your father loves you. You must know who you are. To the God Queen, a king needs to be cared for and encouraged. The man has been receiving love from a woman for his entire life. From the womb, he has been nurtured and cared for by the God Queen. The man will always seek water from your well. You must provide living water. A man is guided by his vision. Encourage him. Help him to see that he is not only a man full of shortcomings and weaknesses, but he is God and he is the image of the Most High, your Father. You are light when the world is in darkness. You are his peace when the storms of his soul are raging. You are his queen. You are his mother. You are his God. To the God Queen, the problem is you don't understand the king. I know you have been to a million conferences, lectures, Bible studies, etc. on how to get a man, keep a man, be better than a man, how you don't need a man, but no one has taught you about the man. A man is born being nurtured by a queen. He will seek her for peace, a retreat from the daily mental and physical wars he fights. Learn what brings him peace. If he's an 80s baby, he likes old school hip hop, video games, sports, bowling, skating, working out, etc. Whatever his favorite drink is, you should know. Only you calm the beast. You can change his vibrations. When he is at war, be his peace. In times of war, you help him fight the enemy. Get back to the system of God and leave the system of men and serpents. To the Queen, humanity is created to give love and receive love. It's the system of God nature. A man struggles with loneliness the most. A man is created for work, so he will work himself to death if left to himself. His soul will be in constant war. Some even lose control of their minds. Without love and life energy from another human, they tend to seek ways to numb their body from the pains filling their soul. Adam is lost and must be located. He is dying a slow death. If he is your king, you must nurture him as a mother nurtures her son in the womb. If he is your brother, bind his wounds and show compassion for him. We must care for our brothers. This is your created purpose. I don't care what your guru, life coach, master teacher, pastor, minister, baba, prophet, favorite singer told you. You are gods and children of the Most High. Free yourself from these fruitless trees. Dominate your industry and your thoughts. Be fruitful and multiply yourself, learning and teaching, and replenish this dark world with your light and your love. The Queen in Search of Black Gold Jesus taught the parable of the lost coin. In the parable, a woman searched and searched for the coin until she located it. The black man is lost. 
Until he is located, his true value will never be experienced. He can't live out his created purpose. He must be located. He must get a vision of his true identity. You are not just a man of physical matter, full of weaknesses and past pains and mistakes. You are God's. You are spirit and matter, heaven and earth. God is your father and the earth is your mother. Know who you are. Visualize your true self through the eye of your soul. Arise, you gods. Provide, protect, and teach. Be one with light. Pledge allegiance to our father, our family, and our neighbors. To the God Queen, what happens when a woman fights while she is pregnant? The queen is the life carrier of the universe. She is the source of life and all life flows through her. All humanity was nurtured by a queen from the womb and will always return to her for nourishment. This is the system of God's nature, not men's philosophy. A woman receives a seed, multiplies it, and returns it back to the universe. So if your womb is filled with pain, stress, hate, violence, etc., that is what you are giving back to the universe. Plant seeds of love, patience, self-control, peace, joy in your womb, and watch your world change. Watch your mood change. Be filled with water, queen, so you can water our world with your love. Be one with light. Be with, be one with your heavenly father. To the queen, we continue to trade the wisdom of God for the fables of men and serpents. The king is nurtured from the womb of a queen from, conce from conception. She gave the seed its life, and her very body is designed for the nourishment and nurturing of the child in her womb. You are designed to carry the king. He will always return to you for life, water, and love. He needs your fruit. There once was a snake who planted an evil seed into the soul of Eve. The seed produced an evil fruit. She gave to him, and he ate. The snake understood the strength of the queen. She is the source of life. The queen must never listen to snakes. She must plant seeds of love, patience, and peace in her soul, and she will give us good fruit. You are the tree that gives good life. To the queen. Conversations with the serpent sent the queen on an evil search for godlike knowledge. She didn't understand her identity and purpose, so the lies of the snake deceived the woman. Queen, do you know who you are? Do you understand your purpose and identity? Do you understand why your body is shaped like fruit? Is it a coincidence that the snake came to the queen? Is it a coincidence that Jesus healed the woman with the issue of blood and the woman at the well? Is it a coincidence that blood and water flow through the vagina? That also looks like fruit. Wake up, you gods. We have traded the truth of God for the lies of men and serpents. Queen, be one with the light, the spirit of your heavenly father. You are the tree that provides good fruit. You are the well that provides living water in the earth. Be filled with love. About the author. I am the creator and master teacher of the God Kingdom philosophy. The GKP is not a new religion. It's simply a study of the Most High's greatest creation, you. I am not opposed to any other religious organizations or worldview, and I do not disrespect sincere people who desire truth and the meaning of life. But my honest belief is that the very elect have been deceived. God has no religion. I believe that religion has failed to answer the most important questions presented by life. Questions like, what is the meaning of life? Who am I? What is time? What is right and wrong? What happens after death? Does God exist? Why is evil in the world? What is destiny and free will? What is philosophy? I also spent much of my life puzzled by these same questions. The GKP answers all of these questions. My hope is that we all can grow in understanding, in love, and in peace as we walk together in discovering the true purpose in which we were created. Have a peaceful journey. And now for today's prayer and meditation brought to you by Mr. Cornell Gregory.
This broadcast has been brought to you by the God Kingdom Philosophy with creator and master teacher, Mr. Cornel Gregory. To find out more, please follow us at Mr. Cornel Gregory Health Coach. Dot com. Thank you. And until next time, have a peaceful day.